If you enjoyed the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircurrentreview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy. Um, great question. And, and it's funny because with the movie and my, my history with, uh, with the school, uh, there was still, I don't think it's necessarily now, but there was still for a very, very long time just an assumption that Top Gun was a Hollywood thing and not really an actual organization, a brick and mortar schoolhouse. So the genesis of, of Top Gun, uh, World War II, Korean War, uh, U.S. Navy and Marine Marine Corps air crew had a roughly 10 to 12 to one kill ratio. So mm -hmm. for every good guy we lose, we shoot down 10 to 12 bad guys. We step into the Vietnam conflict and technology has moved on uh, and we're fighting, uh, argu not arguably, definitely less technologically advanced platforms that the North Vietnamese were, were flying and, and even uh, the Chinese are supplying or the Russians are supplying into, oh, wow. into that conflict. Uh, and the kill ratio, which had started at 10 to 12 to one, over the course of time in the 60s started mm. diminishing. And by the time we hit 67, 68, uh, in some cases it had flipped where it was one to two, mm. an F-4 Phantom, which the Navy, the Marine Corps and the Air Force were flying at that time, uh, most technologically advanced plane in the world was losing to mm. inferior MiGs. So there's a hiatus in the Air War in 1968. Hey, hiatus in the Air War in 1968, sorry. Um, and, and uh, at that time, uh, the chief of naval Oper operations, they were trying to figure out what was going on. And so they tasked a, a gentleman named Frank Alt, who was a captain, to go off and conduct a study and figure out what's going on. So Captain Alt goes off and he does tons of research. He talks to acquisition professionals and air crew and operators and really kind of the whole uh, kit and caboodle. And he comes back with what is known as famously the Alt Report, not surprisingly. And in the Alt Report, he determines that the reason for air crew performance over the, the preceding four or five years is due to a, a lack of knowledge, general lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge over the threat aircraft and what it could do, the threat weapons and what could it do, what the Phantom could do, what the Phantom weapons could do. Uh, additionally, he found a host of other issues, the acquisition timelines and, per, and procuring the wrong weapons, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but in that report, he had a list of recommendations. And list recommendation number one was to stand up a graduate level schoolhouse to teach advanced kind of a, uh, tactics and, and weapons, et cetera. And so out of that, uh, the chief of naval operations directed that VF-121, which was the F-4 Phantom Fleet Replacement Squadron in Miramar, would stand up an adva advanced tactics cell, if you will. Um, and so the very first individual charge was Lieutenant Commander Dan Pedersen, call sign Yank, and the CO of 121 went to Yank and said, figure this out, you've got it. Don't care what you do. And this is, mind you, this is 1968, 1969, so, you know, there was not the standard procurement and military contracting mm -hmm. timelines, etc. So Yank grabbed eight guys, we call them the original nine. Um, they grabbed a trailer, put it outside the hangar of VF-121, <clears throat> procured a couple of a couple of uh, chalkboards uh, liberated a safe for two, and on March 3rd, 1969, opened the doors of the very first class, which was two uh, Phantom air crews, so a pilot and a Wizzo, um, and started teaching Navy Fighter Weapon School and Navy Fighter Weapon School tactics. So they went into a bar, and you can see I'm wearing the shirt here, on a bar napkin through this patch that still exists to this day awesome. at the Miramar Oak Club. Yeah, uh, and away it went. Um, and so they taught a number of classes. The air war kicked back off. Um, and, hey, stop. The air <laughs> war kicks back off. Uh, and uh, the proof is in the pudding. By the, the end of the Vietnam War, the kill ratio had bounced back to about 14 to 1. Wow. Uh, based, based upon that. So, you know, there, there's, there's a peacetime dividend that usually ensues after some sort of uh, conflict. Uh, and so there was some thought downsizing and getting rid of it, but they had to, they, 
literally had to look and see, okay, here's the success here. The Air Force saw the success. They established their own weapons school now in Nellis. Uh, and it just grows and grows and grows to the point where uh, now we're at 54 years of, uh, of the doors being open. And Top Gun is, in fact, the model. It's the model for naval aviation across all communities. It's the model for naval a na the Navy writ large across aviation, surface, subsurface, special warfare, intel, supply, believe it or not. Uh, when I was the commanding officer at Top Gun, um, there was a direction that there was a need to broaden how every warfighting community does business. And so we're taking stream rays of Navy admirals to come in and say, OK, what exactly do you do here? Um, this is our, our community. We've never done this. So let's how do we figure this out? So mm -hmm. that has become the model and it continues to this day.